It is my distinct pleasure as the 18th president of Shaw University to welcome you to our annual celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I think it's appropriate to take a moment and really think about the appropriateness of this day in this time or the, the legacy of this moment in time because as you know, Dr. King's birthday actually was several days ago, but we are still celebrating all that he achieved and meant to us as African Americans. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, I want to lift up for your consideration this day as we think about the condition of our nation, as we think about the senseless death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and most recently, Andre Hill. These are all things that King, Dr. King fought against his entire lifetime. And so I hope that it causes us as we undertake this celebration to remember that the responsibility now is ours to carry forth that dream. The land where we will be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. But that will not happen lest we demand it, fight for it, and be true to what we believe and what we know to be true. I know that our Dean, Dean Johnny Hill, is a King scholar. And I know that when you hear from him, you're gonna hear about the beloved community and the amazing uh, contributions Dr. King made in civil rights. But I wanna talk especially to the young people today. And I wanna point you to a paper that Dr. King wrote when he was a student at Morehouse College. And it is especially important that you hear the words written by a student during his undergraduate years. I want you to recognize he was thinking about his responsibility beyond himself, even as an undergraduate. I want you to want to make the same kind of differences in the world. But first of all, you got to appreciate what it is that prepares you to do so. You've done some amazing things, and I am so proud of each and every one of you. Your efforts to get out the vote, your participation in you know, the silent protests, you're making your voices heard about issues that are important to you. But I wanna focus your attention right now on your education because education has always been the mechanism for black people to transform their lives and has been the pathway to the middle class and to social mobility. I'm going to remind you again, Dr. King wrote this article for the Maroon Tiger newsletter as an undergraduate. So please indulge me. Dr. King writes, and he wasn't Dr. King then, he was Martin. As Dr. King wrote, as I engaged in the so-called bull sessions around and about the school, I too often find that most college students 
have a misconception of the purpose of education. Most of the students think that education should equip them with the proper instruments of exploitation so that they can forever trample over the masses. Still others think that education should furnish them with noble ends rather than the means to an end. It seems to me that education has a twofold function to perform in the life of men and women and in society. The one is utility and the other is culture. Education must enable a person to become more efficient, to achieve with increasing facility the legitimate goals of his or her life. He goes on to write, education must also train one for quick, resolute, and effective thinking. To think incisively and to think for oneself is very difficult. We are prone to let our mental life become invaded by legions of half-truths, prejudices, and propaganda. We just witnessed that in the insurrection at the Capitol. At this point, I often wonder whether or not education is fulfilling its purpose. A great majority of the so-called educated people do not think logically and scientifically. Even the press, the classroom, the platform, and the pulpit in many instances do not give us objective and unbiased truths. To save mankind from the morass of propaganda, in my opinion, is one of the chief aims of education. Education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the true from the false the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. But education which stops with efficiency may prove the greatest menace to society. Hear this, the most dangerous criminal may be the man gifted with reason but no morals, and we know such a man. The late Eugene Talmadge, in my opinion, possessed one of the better minds of Georgia or even America. Moreover, he wore the Phi Beta Kappa key. By all measuring rods, Mr. Talmadge could think critically and intensively. Yet he contends that I am an inferior being. Are those the types of men we call educated? We must remember that intelligence is not enough. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. The complete education gives one not only power of concentration, but worthy objectives upon which to concentrate. The broad education will therefore transmit to one not only the accumulated knowledge of the race, but also 
the accumulated experience of social living. And then he warns in closing, if we are not careful, our colleges will produce a group of closed-minded, unscientific, illogical propagandist consumed with immoral acts. Be careful. Be careful, students. Be careful, teachers. I leave you with this because we have an opportunity to craft truth and make sure that it is the truth for all and not for some. Thank you to all of you who participated or will participate on this program and thank you for being a part of the Shaw University family. Thank you.